The first Creative Mornings Fort Lauderdale was fantastic and I'm glad I could be a part of the initial group gathering. It's a very cool event. On behalf of Florida Community Bank, we are so honored to be the inaugural sponsor of this morning's Creative Breakfast. We had a fabulous time. We learned so much about Fort Lauderdale and Fat Village and we are definitely committed to attending in the future. Thank you for allowing us to sponsor. Thank you. Thank you. I am visiting the Fort Lauderdale chapter of Creative Mornings from the New York chapter of Creative Mornings, 117 cities around the world, and Fort Lauderdale is one of the newest ones. Creativity in Miami and Florida is blossoming, and so we just look forward to future collaborations that are going to stretch from here to Disneyland. We put it together a great team, did an amazing job, and this is the first one of many, so pretty excited and this is going to be an awesome thing for for a lot of them so for a lot of them be prepared for nice great mornings in august so i give to you guys Doug McCraw. Well, thank you thank you very much <laughs> Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Doug McCraw, and I'm the uh, founder of Fat Village. I sort of think of myself more as uh, maybe the mad scientist because uh, Fat Village has been, a, it's been a, a labor of love and madness, I would say. But uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, when I was thinking about collaboration, um, and I was looking at uh, the business card yesterday, and from Axis Space, the power of collaboration. I felt like it was the perfect metaphor for what Fat Village is. Fat Village, the, the existence of it is about all the collaboration that goes on there. <clears throat> Next. So uh, we're about uh, technology and art. The Fat and Fat Village stands for Flagler Arts and Technology. The Flagler comes from because we were built along the railroad track and Henry Flagler originally developed this area as a warehouse district. And I felt like these buildings were very architecturally significant and when we actually started this area it was, um, it was crack central basically. And, and today it's, it's had quite a metamorphosis. So collaboration, really, uh, because of what we are, is it's in the DNA of Fat Village. Everything there uh, really is about collaboration. Next slide. Um, I'm going to start with a few of the companies uh, that we have technology related in Fat Village. And one of them is General Provision, which is uh, co-work space, uh, much like access space is here. Um, uh, originally, uh, when they came to us, uh, we generally do not have very much space, space available, so it's a curated process, and we really um, plan for the opportunity to, to have someone fit into the environment that we've created there. And this company has been a great fit. Uh, they actually sponsor uh, Wincode out of Miami and that location uh, when they came to Fat Village it brought a lot of new activity um, really do some very cutting-edge things next uh, CNI Studios a lot of you may be familiar with uh, this is an agency they have locations uh, in Raleigh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Los Angeles, I'm, I'm missing one more place, um, Austin, Austin I think it is. <clears throat> but they literally do anything um, related to branding, um, 
photography, they do some fashion photography, they do um, video, film production, and sound production. So this group has also been a great fit in Fat Village, <clears throat> and certainly very, very collaborative. Um, they work with, when I, when I think of collaboration in Fat Village, um, a lot of the people who are there uh, end up working on projects together. It happens a lot. This company is one of the most active in that arena. <clears throat> um, they also, as part of being a part of Fat Village, uh, they open CNI Next Door, which is the coffee shop uh, a lot of you may be familiar with. Um, uh, it's a real fun place to go. It's like a little speakeasy of sorts. And uh, it's, people are very, very surprised uh, when they see it and visit it. Next. So um, this is a great story of collaboration. This is uh, the Cadence Design Group in Fat Village. And I approached them a few years, well, a couple of years ago. And I had this idea that, that I wanted a streetscape in Fat, Fat Village. And this is a very, very cutting edge group. And I went to them and I said, I want to do something that would be worthy of, of national design rec recognition. And so when we sat down and started collaborating on it, they came up with the idea of it's a, along a railroad track. So they took the couplings of the boxcars, and that actually became a design motif uh, that's used in the street. Then they incorporated very cutting edge um, technologies, uh, electric charge stations, solar lighting, uh, all sorts of things to make this uh, a really, really unique place. And then you can see at night, it's set up so that uh, you can have uh, bollards in the street for, for the art walks and, and evening activities. So this, this in terms of collaboration is, is a, probably one of the best examples of Fat Village being a very collaborative place. And this has involved a number of different people and businesses within that village. <clears throat> Next. So Art Light Space is a brand new company. It's a company that I actually am a partner in, uh, in Fat Village. And uh, we do very cutting edge uh, art technology projects that are public or corporately, uh, corporately done. <clears throat> Um, these are some of the projects right now that we're working on. Again, very collaboratively, we work with artists, uh, lighting people, all sorts of things. This project right here is the Fort Lauderdale Water Tower, which is just north and west of Fat Village. And we were sitting at CNI one evening after an art walk, having a beer, and we were saying, gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if if that water tower was looked at as a piece of sculpture as opposed to just a water tower. <clears throat> and we went to the city and sort of pitched our idea. And as the team really began to interact on this, and I say team because it involved lighting people, it involved design people, um, certainly technology, we came up with the idea of wouldn't it be neat if it could be interactive? So we took the whole idea of, of the tower being a piece of interactive sculpture. And you'll be able to go onto a smartphone or a computer, and you'll be able to paint your colors and pick your music, your song, and then the light show will be syndicated in those colors and operate around the building. And the queues right now, it looks like, will be about, it'll be about a two minute queue, but everybody can do their, their custom color of the water tower. 
you'll be able to you'll be able to do you'll be able to look at it from anywhere in the world. So if a parent was in Iraq or somewhere, the, the kids could go on and do their little light show and and I'm sure Happy Birthday will be one that gets gets played a lot. <laughs> but we're very excited about this. And in, in speaking to the collaboration of this project, uh, I just went next door to General Provisions because there was some quite a bit of technology involved in getting the lights on it um, designed in such a way that it would be uh, it would be in a, the cadence with the music and uh, to be able to go next door. Uh, that process becomes much, much more efficient. And that's what's great about co-working spaces. I mean, you, you're not making appointments, wasting time. You just go next door and you, you can have a five minute meeting and take care of what you do. It becomes a very, very efficient business process. The project to the left is one of four hospitals that we're doing in the North Broward Hospital District. And uh, we're doing the donor walls. And the whole idea for this project was if, if you look at sort of on the bottom right, there's a picture and this is a, a photograph of brain neurons operating. And so the artist team then took, took that idea of the neurons, <coughs> we created an outline of a brain and then the neurons actually connect to the donor names in the project. So it's, it's something, and it will work off a sensor so that when the person walking into the room engages the sensor, then the, the donor wall is activated. So uh, this particular uh, company is, is really exciting in that Every project's different. Uh, they're very, very cutting edge. Um, the lighting system on the tower was actually, uh, they, they had specially designed lens and the, the Wi-Fi operated. They'd only been on the market about three weeks when, when we actually pitched this project. So we're always looking for, you know, the very latest in technology to make these projects happen. Next. Uh, this is a little company that um, does, uh, they do some wonderful things, again, sort of in the branding area, uh, social networking management, very uh, cutting edge company, they've won many Addy Awards, uh, they have some national clients, and they operate out of these small offices in Fat Village, pretty amazing. They also have a gallery that uh, during art walks is... Um, uh, they do a show every month. Next. Uh, the collaboration in Fat Village certainly involves a lot at the city level um, in, in, in arts and community. When Fat Village started, the, the arts community in Fort Lauderdale, I would say, was pretty siloed. Everybody had their, they had their own set of donors. They were very protective of their, their group of supporters. And since that time, uh, I think Fat Village has sort of become a spot, and the word, the word I would use is sticky. Uh, it's, it's very much a part of collaboration and aggregation for the arts community. And something very exciting is happening now in the arts in Fort Lauderdale. And that is that we, we all know each other very well. We collaborate all the time. Uh, we do projects together. Uh, we do events together. And so right now, the arts in Fort Lauderdale is very much at a flex point. I mean, uh, Bonnie Clearwater, who's the director, she's been here now about a year and a half, uh, coming to the museum, she has a national and international reputation. So that's had a major impact uh, on the arts here in Fort Lauderdale. And it's very exciting. Um, 
Young at Art is a children's art facility. Uh, and it's literally, I do not know of one any finer in the world, and a lot of people don't even know about it. And it's about 80,000 square feet of magic, the most magic environment that you can imagine. It would be like, uh, it would be like this for kids, like this space except for kids. I mean, it is amazing, and if you, you haven't seen it, or if you have children, you definitely should. Uh, the Girls Club, uh, very, very collaborative part of Fort Lauderdale, and uh, the, the owners have a world-class art collection, been a very strong component within the community. <clears throat> the Broward County Cultural Division, all of these, all of these, entities are right now working very closely together to really put Fort Lauderdale on the map on a regional, national, and international basis. Next. Um, certainly within the city, uh, arts districts uh, don't happen without, I think, a, a, a strong community awareness from uh, city county government. And so I would say that that certainly, at this point in time, is very, very well activated within Fort Lauderdale. Next. So I was going back through slides, and I was thinking that one of the most exciting collaborations that's ever happened in, in the history of Fat Village was uh, Better Block or Revel on the Block, and it was part of a national program. And Cadence, uh, the design group, uh, was the company who sort of, didn't sort of, they very much um, came to Fat Village with the idea of, gee, if you have these old warehouses and the streets are not greenscaped, what if we transform this area for a day into the possibilities of what it could be. So there were pop-up restaurants, uh, bars, um, re retail establishments, brought in all these plants, it closed the street for a day. We had over 2,000 people, and it really was important to show and represent what Fat Village could be uh, if someone used their imagination. So this, this was a collaboration on many, many, many levels. Next. Uh, we do a lot of public projects. Um, this is one we did with Dillard Elementary School. Uh, th they did a mural painting. We had about 500 kids, 200 adults, and we did it on the day of an art walk, which was a bit of madness. <laughs> But, uh, but, it, but it worked, and it, and it worked really well. Uh, this really came out of um, Fort Lauderdale being a participant in the All-America City Competition in Denver, Colorado. Uh, that's where we met all these people. Uh, Dillard had a, has a wonderful program uh, that is getting some national attention. And so we sort of created that environment for them to come in, um, be recognized with a mural, and spend the day doing art activities. <clears throat> Next. So art walks, I don't know if everyone's been there. We do them on the last Saturday of every month. Uh, they're amazing. All of these pictures are from the project space, which is our main exhibition space in Fat Village. Uh, we take a very serious look at emerging artists uh, who work with big installations. The artists generally do not have uh, um, an opportunity very often to use space of this type this way. I remember we had, a, we had an artist in from Brooklyn once, and um, he asked if we could leave him in the warehouse uh, he was uh, doing an he was planning an installation there. He showed up in my office about an hour later, and he literally was emotional. 
it was it was amazing. So it, it's exciting to have this space. This is 10,000 square feet, and you can see the the old wooden rafters and the trusses in the warehouse. Very very architecturally unique space, but it's free span, so it is amazing space for artists to show their work. Our two directors are both RISD, Rhode Island School of Design graduates, I think. I think he went on to Parsons for his MFA, and she finished at the University of Miami, her MFA. So, and they both are my partners in our light space. So this is the quality of what we aggregate on the art side, which complements the, the technology side of Fat Village. Next. So these are artist uh, studios. We have about 20 artists in Fat Village. Quite a few of them are MFAs. A lot of them teach professionally. And so this is a, it, it is amazing that it has only been, I would say very recently, that I have seen a real connectivity between art and technology. People are beginning to realize that that creative side, uh, whether, whether it is in technology or it is in art, very closely uh, uh, related. Next. And so once a year we do, I call it art meets technology, but uh, this, is, this was one of the pieces of art out of, out of one of the shows, and the name of the show was Beat Bop Boot. But this is where uh, we've, we've had artists literally from all over the world show uh, uh, art pieces in this show. And it's very, very exciting because this type of art and this art light space sort of was the business side of where this goes. Uh, it's where art is immersive, it's experiential, and it's participatory. And that is very, very exciting from an art perspective. Uh, I, I think it engages a lot of people who might not be interested in art if they were just looking at a picture on the wall. So uh, that's another project that we do. Next. <clears throat> this is the latest collaboration of Fat Village. Uh, and we have one of the big warehouse spaces. And the idea is that all of the art within this space will go up into the ceiling because we use this space for events. We just recently hosted the Florida Panthers uh, for their after draft day <clears throat> in Fort Lauderdale. And so we right now have a call out to artists uh, and have, have gotten a lot of response. But all of the work will go up into the ceiling so that the events can happen. But we also have created another wonderful, very high quality venue for Fat Village. Next. So the Fat Village Arts District, uh, the power of collaboration. Um, I think Fat Village is, that is the story of Fat Village. It is collaboration on many levels, many ways. Um, uh, it's a very exciting place to be. Uh, there's a lot of energy about it. Um, uh, and, and it is in a constant state of metamorphosis. And so it's always evolving and changing. And there's still a lot of changes to come. And thank you. <laughs> and I, I know a lot of times, uh, People have questions, so if you do have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Yes, Jason. In terms of the curating process of collaboration, have you found any best practices in terms of uh, checks and balances so that no one voice becomes too frank? Well, I, that's, a, that's a great question because uh, I think a lot of times some people may be more passionate about being in Fat Village than others. And, and I think those that are mo most passionate probably have, have the greatest presence there uh, or, or more active. Uh, bringing 
tenants into Fat Village is actually a curated process. Uh, I mean, we have a lot more people right now that want to be there than we have space available. So we're very interested in what, what they do, how they do it, what is the fit. All of the businesses in Fat Village now are in some sense arts related. Uh, and it's very important because I think participating in the art walk, uh, you know, we want people there who are very excited about it. I mean, w we have had past tenants who, who are like, this is crazy and, you know, what are you, you, know, what are you doing? I, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Uh, our last art walk, we had more than 5,000 people. So it's, uh, it's growing. We have food trucks and people bring their dogs, their babies, strollers, you name it. And it's an incredible ethnic demographic, age demographic. It just makes it, it's very unusual and, and pretty rare. Uh, there is one other thing I want to mention too, and that's Cadence is doing this wonderful collaborative project. And Ashley's here. I think she's um, she um, can tell you more about it. But but they're developing the Mockingbird Trail here in Fort Lauderdale. I think this is one of the most powerful art ideas, um, certainly that South Florida has ever seen. And it's amazing. And they're, they're building a trail that will have art pieces in the installation along the trail so that people will be able to walk the area. And Fat Village is certainly, a, a, we're lucky to be in a very, uh, Focus spot for the development of that trail by Cadence. What are the endpoints of that trail? You know, Ashley can answer that really better than I can. Uh, it's a two mile route. Uh, you can check out our real quick video on the website. It's called mockingbirdtrail.com. It's an urban art trail. There's going to be evidence of the who's it orange mockingbird that lives in the neighborhood. We don't actually ever see it. Uh, we hope to debut October 17th. We're all excited. It's, it's, it's a fabulous, fabulous idea. Any other questions? How do you think, how will you be able to continue to attract um, the artists that you're trying to attract if um, you're running out of space? That's one thing. And the rents and the cost for getting there are going to be, um, it's going to be prohibited for these artists that don't have the money to basically get there. Arts? Uh, Great question, and I think it's any time an area gentrifies, this is a very um, powerful component of what happens. Uh, my experience in terms of the artist, and, and I, I started out as a collector, that's how all this madness began. Uh, uh, the artist to have space it really needs to be a public-private partnership because it involves either, almost always, it is a public component where there is, where an area is zoned, particularly for that use. It is tax abated for that use. So that means my personal opinion is it should be a nonprofit. Uh, private, if you, if you look at Wynwood or Soho or Chelsea or Brooklyn and you know you, you can watch these areas morph and move because once they gentrify you know they get expensive. The other thing you can do and Craig Robbins in Miami is doing one of the most amazing brilliant jobs of this I've ever seen and he's taking all the designer fashion houses from all over the world and he's putting them in the old design district in Miami, and he's anchoring it with museums. So you have the Dela Cruz Museum there, the ICA is getting ready to be built and open, and these become anchors. Uh, I think for the artist component, in the original beginning planning stages of arts districts, the city, there should be a deal made with the city that we want this to happen, we want it to have this flavor and this character, and no one will change it. Boston, interestingly enough, has done that in some areas where the area has grown up around 
the artist space, but the artist spaces have always remained there, tax abated, and uh, set up as nonprofits within the city. But I'm seeing now <clears throat> with Wynwood, that's not happening. Now, now it's, it's going <clears throat> in the wrong direction. Right. Well, I would say that Wynwood is becoming a technology center and is no longer an art center. Um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of the better galleries have, have moved from Wynwood. I think Craig Robbins is coming at it from the other side, you know, very high end. I want this to be this way and, you know, he's, he's creating it. But it's, it's, a, it's a big problem and it's certainly a conundrum because it's, and I, and I can say this from experience, to have space that artists can afford, then you need an established artist. It's not just the sidewalk garden variety. I mean, you know, and, and generally they are professionals. So, so, you know, they can't afford higher, higher rents in spaces. But I would say as the area really turns to uh, more retail, that it, it becomes very expensive for artists to be there. We have time for one question. One quick question. Uh, as you've grown, access into the area for residents is more challenging as far as parking and getting in. Have you looked at that? We look at that every, every day. I had a meeting yesterday with the city about it. Uh, as, as the area gentrifies, there will be uh, parking built and I know this because we, we get to see the master plans uh, and some of them are ours. <laughs> but uh, that, that, is, that is a problem. I, I think that Fat Village, which is part of Flagler Village, uh, really has the opportunity to be more of a live, work, play neighborhood and that is the plan. Uh, so that more people ride their bikes or walk. And I think it's one reason that, that Flagler Village, you know, it has tremendous growth right now because it is convenient and there are cool things to do and it, and it has a reputation and a cool vibe about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Sure. Um, shirts and hoodies, so if you could say a number between 1 and 63. So. Everyone pull out your postcards. Pull out your postcards.